In this video, we'll quickly cover movement using Input Manager, as well as briefly covering the difference between using transform.translate versus physics-based movement. The first method is the quickest and easiest way to get started, but it is not the preferred or recommended way to implement 8-way directional movement. We're going to start by making a new project or making a new scene and navigate the game object through the object cube. So we see that inside our editor, we have a cube. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to go to the project. We're going to create, right click on it. You see C sharp script, and we're just going to call this movement script. Seems it's a little repetitive, but it's fine. And once you're done with that, just double click on it and it'll open it up. It'll open up Visual Studio, or if you don't have it, it'll have the uh, amount of develop that's opening up. And here we'll have this available. So now we can start coding. But before we start coding, we need to cover Input Manager. If you're already familiar with it, you can skip ahead. Otherwise, you may want to find the link that's inside the uh, video's description. I also have it inside the code repository on Git. And just give it a quick read, but essentially um, you see that input manager from this documentation. Um, essentially you're setting or mapping up uh, control schemes, you know, based on or what they call it axis. But I like to think of it as just control schemes that you're mapping together and able to set what button does um, what positive, negative and alternative buttons to, to use that. So that's that. So now let's begin decoding. Uh, but before we do that, let me just show you where you can actually access this. So you go inside Unity, and you go to Edit, Project Settings, Input, and you see Input Manager open up on the side, right? So then, just like that, we have uh, horizontal. Um, it's left or right buttons. I think there's actually um, a legend that will show you what you can type in for these values if you have something else like a different key. But uh, yeah, pretty much covers input manager. So now that we're back to the movement script that we've made, all you have to do is make three variables. Uh, we'll make them public. We don't have to, but we'll call it public float, move horizontal, public float, move vertical, and public float speed. And pretty much inside the update, all we have to do is set the horizontal movement to input that get axis horizontal. This is referencing that axis that we just covered uh, a few seconds ago inside the input manager times the speed and move vertical equals input dot get axis Oops. vertical times speed so these two are going to handle the input when you're using left or right or up or down arrow keys or and whatever alternatives you might have set for that and for the actual movement we have transform dot translate whoa transform that translate Set the X, so you see that it says a vector 3, so we need an X, Y, and Z. So the X is going to be move horizontal, the Y is going to be move vertical, and since it's 2D, there is no Z movement, so we could set 0. You get that, you press save, and we'll go back to Unity. We see that we don't have the script attached to the cube, so we want to go to the cube. Add, you go to scripts, click on movement script. So these two, we didn't have to make a public variable, but you could, we did it so that you could see the um, value as you press the keys. Really, uh, you just need to set a speed. So we'll use a five for the speed and you press play. And you can see that we're now moving around when we press up and down, left and right, you see these values changing up and moving around accordingly. So that's method one. 
So now that we have method one down, let's go over why using transform.translate is not an ideal way to get actual movement. So we notice over here that we have the cube, um, we have box collide, this is still 3D, so we'll stick with it for this example. Go to new 3D object, make another cube. We'll just make this distinctly different by making it much bigger. So the idea is that if, if this were a wall, we would want the player to stop when we hit it, right? But that's not going to happen using transform that translate. It does not use physics at all. You see, we're going right through it. So we're going to handle that by using physics to move the player instead of using transform that translate. So in order to make it compatible with physics, there's just a few things that we need to do here. We can keep the same script that we had for transform that translate. We just want to add two new variables. One is public float rigid body 2D. It's the player. This is a reference to the rigid body 2D that we added to the player object or the cube. And another is private vector 2 movement. This will be the vector 2 to actually handle the movement of the uh, player. So one thing before I continue is that over here we see that we have transform that translate move horizontal, move vertical, and we said that there's zero movement in the Z plane, so we set it to zero. Well, that's when we're dealing with a 3D world, so let's just get rid of that altogether. We're not dealing with that, so let's remove it, plus it's using transform that translate anyways. So the only thing we need to do here is state that this new vector 2 called movement will be of new vector 2 and it'll have move horizontal and move vertical as its uh, inputs or float values for X and Y. And then we can do player dot velocity equals movement times the speed we want to move at. So that's pretty much all we need. So now we're back in the editor. We're going to select the cube or the player object. We're going to go to the player, this public rigid body. Um, we're going to link it up to the cube. Now we want to go back to this cube that's supposed to be the wall. Well, first let's confirm that the movement works, right? So we'll press play. Sure enough, it does work. We are able to move around just like we did, but we're using physics now instead. So in order to get the wall to work properly, what we have to do is get rid of this 3D collider and add physics 2D, box collider 2D, and play it again, <laughs> and we should be able to collide with this wall. See that? So this is why you want to use physics movement over transform that translate for at least player movement. It just makes a lot more sense and that's a lot less programming for restrictions. So let's go back to the code real quick. Just something I wanted to note to you, which is that we're using void update here while we're using a rigid body uh, 2D to be specific. Uh, since that's a physics interaction, we want to use something called fixed update over regular update. Um, I'll link the two differences on the documentation between update and fixed update, but to summarize it, it's pretty much that uh, things that are inside a regular void update might run once per frame, while fixed update can run several times, uh, one to several, one to many times in that single frame. So it's much more important for physics since you know we want to be able to detect collision as accurately as possible. So maybe something happens in half a frame, we want to make sure that's registered. So the last thing I wanted to highlight, and it's an important one to understand, is why do we use player.velocity over player.force? Or aka, why do we use rigid body.velocity over rigid body dot add force? Um, just in case you're confused, player, we already stated, is a rigid body or a rigid body 2D. So anyways, let's see what happens when we do rigid body dot add force. So we'll do player dot add force. Movement times speed. So the same exact vector 2 is being sent. Let's comment this one out and we'll go back to the editor. So inside the editor we have a cube. We'll press play. 
So we're stationary, so I'm just going to tap uh, the left direction just once, and you'll see that there's constant movement. You know, I'm going to tap the right button once, and it looks like it stopped, but it's still moving at a very slow rate. And basically the idea is that there's continuous movement, continuous flow of force. In order to understand the difference between these two, we have this great explanation on game dev stack exchange. Com. And I like these two answers. Uh, the first one is you'd use velocity to move the object at a constant rate, for example, a bullet, and add force to add movement, for example, a spaceship thruster. Also note there are two types of movement, force and impulse. For spaceship thruster, you use impulse. That's a great simple explanation as to the difference between the two. If you notice that when we, we use velocity, it's very similar to the... Um, control scheme or control uh, gameplay that we would get from using transform.translate. Now this is an even better answer where it goes more in depth. You could read it for yourself for what it says for using velocity as well as add force. The important thing to note here as well is that there is an additional overlord option that you can do for add force and they give this nice little chart breakdown that tells you the difference based on the force mode. And this will be linked inside the uh, video description as well as a pinned comment as well as the link to the code. The code itself will also have a link to this. And finally, based on what we just saw on that link, uh, to add an additional force mode, all you have to do is go back to the code for add force, comma, force mode dot force or impulse. You can use either one of these two that they referenced. That concludes this video on 8th direction of movement in Unity 2D. I hope you learned the difference between update and fixed update as well as the difference between rigid body add force and rigid body velocity. Uh, if you want to learn more, subscribe, comment, let me know what else you want to learn and I'll make a video on it. And finally, if you got the time, you have the interest, please feel free to watch my one hour video on how to make a simple shooter game in Unity 2D.